Praise God. Glory a Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and talk to in the name of Jesus Dios le bendiga. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That is Psalms 118, verse 25. I mean, 24, verse 25 also. Uh, like for us, to, before we start, pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. Amen. Father, right now. Thank you, Jesus. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel, God. And we pray for the protection, Father. You know the enemies that have come for years and centuries have tried to destroy mm -hmm. Your people, but God, no weapon that forms against them shall prosper. We believe, God, that your Holy Spirit have his way with your people and bless them and the shield of favor and protection. In Jesus' name, glory be to God Amen. today. You, we're here with Brother Ron Geyer, and we're going to be talking about spiritual welfare. Hallelujah. Brother, glad you're here with us again. Always, Michael. <laughs> I love the fact that you opened up praying for Israel. You know, we just had the second blood moon last, this actually this morning, last oh, night. Oh, yes, yes, That's yes, right. yes. So God sending messages oh, via the yes. uh, stellar internet. Yes. Oh, praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Praise Amen. God. You need to share something about that too. So what is the meaning of the term spiritual warfare? Can you elaborate with sure. us and with the audience? Amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, the Bible says in Corinthians that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And there's this great conflict going on between the church and uh, satanic forces, the world. You know, they, they don't know. Uh, what we're about as Christians and so uh, there's conflict and spiritual warfare basically is that conflict and its representatives the world the flesh and the devil against the church and it's the Word of God it's Amen. always three components to spiritual warfare you have the enemies you have the church and you have the Word of God and that's what spiritual warfare is praise the Lord if the Word of God isn't in it then we're not waging spiritual warfare do you know brother uh, I've noticed that there are some Christians that are having some issues, mental problems. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it so so vast and so strong now, uh, bipolar, uh, panic attacks, right. the spiritual warfare that the devil tries to weaken the body of Christ with issues like that. I know it could be physical or mm -hmm. chemical, mm -hmm. but it also could be spiritual. And in, 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 in the sicknesses and, and with all these laws they're trying to pass about same-sex marriage also. All mm. these spiritual problems we're running into. And um, share something about, what do you Surely. think about, about that? Well, part of the problem with the, with the mental issues is that um, so long we've been taught that the mind is the battlefield. Yes. And that's so erroneous in its teaching. Our mind is not the battlefield. We're teaching people and saints that the mind is the battlefield when it's not a battle in your mind. It's a battle for your mind. It's a totally different concept. Wow. If the mind was the area that we're waging the war, was the battlefield, we'd be schizo, all of us. You know, we'd have that devil over here and the angel over here and they'd be feeding us like this. We'd be walking around. We'd be nutso. Jesus said... Um, uh, that if you're double-minded, don't bother ask anything. You're not going to get anything. Let's go back to the Bible and understand. Because the, the end of the day, uh, 2 Corinthians 10.4 says that your mind is supposed to be a weapon. Amen. But if we keep thinking that it's the battlefield, there's no victory there. Satan has us right where he wants us. Paul writes in Romans, I think it's 7, the last verse, it might be 7.25. He says, with the flesh I serve the law of sin, but with the mind, I serve the law of God. Does that sound like the mind is a battlefield? No. No. Uh, Peter writes in um, 2 Peter, he writes, I think it's verse 1, 2 Peter 2, 1. He writes that, uh, with, uh, he says, um, arm yourself with the mind of suffering, with the mind of denial, with the mind of sacrifice that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. Arm yourself with the mind. That's a weapon word. That doesn't sound like the mind is a battlefield. That no. sounds like the mind is a weapon. Amen. And 2 Corinthians spells it out, 10-4. It says, For weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God 
to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing or every high thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God or the Word of God, and bringing on to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus and having a readiness to avenge all disobedience that our obedience would have been counted as having been fulfilled. Basically what he's saying is the weapons of our warfare, the subject of the sentence is the weapons of our warfare, the weapons, are not carnal but they are mighty through God. Then he goes on to tell you what that weapon is. And he says, uh, the, not mighty, the bringing under captivity every thought mm -hmm. to the obedience of Christ Jesus. He's talking about casting down imaginations. That's your mind that he's talking about. Nowhere in the Bible does it say your mind is the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Many times over, it confirms that your mind is a weapon. Amen. And so once we understand that our minds are to be used for the kingdom, that the battle is not in our minds, it's for our minds. Let me give you this example to mm -hmm. explain it. In World War II, mm -hmm. America was in a war, was it not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was the war in America? No, it was not. It was fought overseas. Mm -hmm. So it, your mind is the same way. Your mind is in a battle, but the battle is not in your mind. Totally different concept. That's where some of this bipolar stuff comes from. Right. Yes, it's satanic in right. its origin, but it's based on deception. Right. If Christians would walk in the truth that my mind is a weapon, we'd be able to withstand those attacks and we'd be able to walk in freedom based on the Word of God instead of um, failure based on deception. And in Romans 12, it says renewing, oh. submit your bodies to live in sacrifice mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. renewing your mind. Read that scripture to us, uh, uh, if you remember right off the scripture. I think it's Romans 12, 1, and it says, uh, let's see, Romans 12, 1, it talks about the fact that we are um, supposed to be transformed, by, uh -huh. that's the word, transformed uh -huh. by the renewing uh -huh. of our minds. Uh -huh. It says, be not conformed uh -huh. to the world. I love what it says, be not conformed. Uh -huh. Don't be conned into being formed Amen. like the world. Amen. Once again, it's another deception. But he says, be transformed. Amen. And when we talk about the different uh, enemies that Amen. we in the church have, we have the world, right. the flesh, mm -hmm. and the devil. Mm -hmm. And God has given us special instructions on how to deal with the devil, which are totally different than the instructions he's given us mm -hmm. on how to deal with the world, mm -hmm. which are totally different than the instructions he's given us on how to deal with the flesh. Mm -hmm. But we not, we're not being trained. You don't hear too many sermons. You know, the Bible says that God's given us pastors, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. When we go to church on Sunday, we're supposed to be perfected by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. This perfects me, mm -hmm. not this. Amen. This perfects us. And our preachers need to go back to preaching the Bible. Amen. Paul told Timothy, Preach the word. Amen. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. We need to go back to preaching the Bible and preaching the gospel. Amen. That's the only way we're going to attain knowledge that will walk us into the truth about the victories as we engage the enemy. You know, I've learned in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34, and, and this has been helping me to help other people with addictions or perversions or sure. or problems with the uh, sickness, whatever. He says, wake up to righteousness oh, good, and yeah. sin not. In other mm -hmm. words, wake up to know what right standing righteousness means, what he actually did at the cross for you. Once you begin to realize that what he did for you at the cross, that the power of sin has been broken. Amen. And then in Romans 8, 2, it says the law of sin and death has been destroyed by the law of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. So the power of sin has, I, if I see a Christian who has addiction problems, mm -hmm. what you need to realize, sir, that power of sin has been broken over you. You need to renew your mind, wake up to reality of what God has actually done for you at the cross, wake up to the right standard, what he has done for you in order for you to be holy and blameless through his strength, because not with your strength. And that's what I'm talking Wake up and realize that that power has no more power over you because you're dead to it. Once I wake him up, hey, wake up. Amen. Realize you don't have to yield to it. So what you're tempted, that's only the normal process. But God says he's not going to let it be tempted more than we're not able to resist. Does that mean we're not going to be tempted? Of course we're going to be tempted with our past life or with anything. Mm -hmm. But once I realize 
who I am and what I have and have a, the mind of Christ that I could battle casting down those evil imaginations. imaginations. Amen. Bringing it down and bringing it to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Bringing See, it to the I'm, obedience. I'm, I'm sensing the presence of God. Why? Because you're preaching the gospel. Amen. Not man's doctrine. Right. You're preaching the right. gospel. There's a companion scripture that goes with that. It says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. and make not provision to fulfill the, the lust, lust of the flesh. Yes. The flesh is our enemy. Amen. And yet what you had just said, mm -hmm. we get stuck in these addictions and these mm -hmm. bad habits and hurts and hangups and they rule our lives because we have not put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have not awakened unto righteousness. Amen. The Bible says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this. Make no provision Amen. to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Don't have a provision. Uh -huh for fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Amen. But walk in the spirit, awake unto righteousness. This is the way we deal with the flesh. The Bible tells us concerning our enemy, the flesh, mm -hmm. that we are supposed to crucify the flesh. Amen. We're supposed to mortify the deeds of the flesh. The Bible says, have no vision. Amen. What, basically, he's saying, what are you looking at? Amen. You know what? Um, when I dealt with the issues with my addiction, when I was bound by that demon of homosexuality, homosexuality yeah. what I did, <clears throat> I, God was showing me, son, Wake up, wake up. Don't you realize that the power <coughs> of sin and death, according to Romans has been 8, broken. 2, has been broken. So you mean that the power of sin and death has been broken over my spirit, soul, and body? I don't have to yield to it just because I'm tempted? Yeah. So wake up. Activate the weapons of your warfare. Amen. Amen. Activate the sword of the spirit. Cast down those evil imaginations. So I begin to say, hey, Satan, come here. Sit right here. Did you know that your power has been broken over me? I don't have to yield to you anymore. Hallelujah. I'm dead to you, but alive unto God, that I'm a new species, that I have the nature of God. I was chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless, that he drawed me to himself to be his servant. And he's... He, what he started in me, according to Philippians he 1, 2, perfect. he will perfect unto the coming of As a Satan, the scripture says that your power of sin and death has been broken. Now I am walking in his righteousness Hallelujah. and his strength. So I refuse to yield to your perversion because I have the nature and I'm walking in the image of of Amen. my Father to walk in holiness. And concerning, Amen. see, Amen. You're, you're doing spiritual warfare there. What most people don't understand is that, you know, the, war, the word war is used four times uh -huh. in the New Testament, but it's never used in our relationship and our dealings with Satan. Amen. You know, the devil's defeated. You know, the Bible says that Christ made a show of these principalities. He spoiled them. He triumphed over them and he made a show of them. We're not supposed to be engaging the devil in spiritual warfare. Concerning our relationship with the devil, time and time again, we're told to resist the devil. Actually, it says, submit yourselves unto the Lord. First. That's right. That's, that's the problem. A lot of people try to resist the devil. Without being submitted to the right, Lord. Right, right. I got a great with, scripture. With strength. Go ahead. It's, we're talking about dealing with Satan. You know, when Jesus came across Satan, when uh, the devil took him up into the mountain to tempt him, Jesus dealt with him. Now, it was, it was a given that Jesus was submitted unto God, which is step number one. Once you submit unto God, you can resist the devil. If you're not submitted to God, don't even try to submit to the devil. The seven oh, sons of Sceva yes. did that, and they got run out of their house naked. <laughs> Amen? But once you submit yourself unto God, you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Satan took Jesus up into the mountain. He tempted it three times. And Jesus, here's spiritual warfare again. You've got two adversaries. You've got Jesus. You've got the devil. And what was the third part that we said? The Word of God. Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written, and Satan fled. It is so important that we understand that our spiritual warfare must include the Word of God. You're going to love this. In Luke 4, 34, Jesus, he's uh, meeting an unclean demon. There's an unclean spirit in somebody. And I love this. The, the, the demons call out and they say, oh man, what are you doing here? We know who you are, Jesus. And then he says this, which is so telling. He says, we know who you are, Jesus. Have you come to torment us before our time? Thou holy one of God. This is so important. He called Jesus the holy one of God. They knew who he was. They knew Jesus. They knew he was the holy one of God. You know, it's important that we understand when we submit ourselves to the Lord,
Then he gives us the strength to resist the devil. And then the devil must flee. But the devil doesn't flee from me because of who I am. The devil flees from me because of what I'm doing. Amen. The devil recognized Jesus, but he didn't recognize the Almighty One of the Lord. He didn't identify him as the righteous one of the Lord. He didn't call him the wise one of the Lord. He called him the holy one of God. It's the holiness that identified Jesus as more than a conqueror before the enemy. Amen. If we're not walking in holiness, we're going to miss it. I wrote this down. You need to check this out. Uh, where is it? Um, the clothing of the saints is righteousness, but the uniform of the warrior is is holiness. Amen. If we are not walking in the holiness of God, we will not be victorious in our confrontations with the enemy. He recognized the holiness. He recognized Jesus as the Holy One of God. That caused the devil to flee. He recognizes holiness in us too. But if you're talking about if we're full of sin, there's no holiness there. That holiness is blocked by our sin. We need to repent and get back with God. You've got to understand this. The devil doesn't have anything that I want. Amen. But he wants everything that I have. And so that's the reason for his attacks. He wants the righteousness that I wear. Amen. He wants the power. Jesus said, Behold, saints of God, I give you might. I give you power. I give you dominion over all of the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Amen. Amen. We have that authority. We're not coming from a place. We're not trying to take anything from the devil. We have the high ground already. That's why he attacks us through the world and the flesh and the devil. And we as Christians need to recognize that we need to appropriate the promises of God when dealing with satanic attacks. It is written, it is written, it is written, and he must flee. You know, there, the difference between a Christian that is defeated mm. and the Christian that walks in victory is that the Christian that walks in victory has the knowledge that he is made righteous through God's strength to resist the devil and he stands in ground like you said casting down and fighting the battlefield out here because we have the mind of Christ and the armor of God and it says in Ephesians it says here <coughs> Ephesians 6 um, great scripture the weapons yes and it says here just this one here verse 14 stand therefore <coughs> having your girdle girded your waist with truth stop right there uh, what is the first thing that he tells you you must right. have in the spiritual warfare? You, <coughs> excuse me, you must have truth. And that's what he says, wake up to righteousness, wake up to the truth that you have been set free, that the power of sin has been broken. Mm. You do not have to yield to it just because you're tempted. That means just because you were bound by the devil before, but now you're a new creature. Amen. The power of sin has been broken. Once you begin to realize that, you begin to say, oh my God, I don't have to yield to it no more. Just because I'm tempted, it's just because the devil's trying to come back, claim his, his previous home. But now this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he says here, stand in truth, have it on the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. Truth, I am the righteousness of God yes. in Christ Jesus. Amen. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. See what I used to say, you lying devils, y'all bind those spiritual homosexuals. You have Amen. no right over me. Amen. I am a new species. I'm a new creature. Just like people claim, I claim by faith I'm blessed financially, prosperity, I'm claiming a job. Why can you not claim your rights, your birthrights, and knowing who you are? That truth. The Bible says my people perish a lack of knowledge. The reason why a lot of Christians or seesaw Christians, they don't realize what really happened when they were born again. Once yes, they yes. find out you who have they are, your, You just demonstrated what having your loins girt about with truth looks like. I am the righteousness of God right. in Christ Jesus. That scripture, by the way, it's not a scripture about knowledge not being available. You're dancing around the key. The key is I could know all this stuff all day long. Right. But unless I obey it, right. I'm not going to have any victory. That scripture, my people, Hosea 4, 6, I think it is, my people are destroyed or perish for lack of knowledge. That doesn't mean that the knowledge isn't available. That doesn't mean that God has not caused them to know truth. Because the rest of the scripture reveals that scripture is not about lack of knowledge. That scripture is about disobedience. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And then God says, because thou has rejected me, Mm. I will reject you. God put the knowledge out there for them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they rejected it. 
and therefore they were destroyed. Not because they weren't, they didn't have access to knowledge or truth, but because they rejected it when God told them. Amen. And he said, because you rejected me, now I'm going to reject you. Amen. We have knowledge available to us too. It must be preached from the pulpit so that we can be perfected, so that we can get out there and do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Spiritual warfare, you know, it takes place more than just where we think it is. Mm -hmm. There's, we go through spiritual warfare every single day. Amen. Look at our city. Our city is under spiritual attack. Many people think that uh, what the mayor is doing with the uh, homosexual issue, uh, Texas is under attack for the gay marriage. There's an article in the paper today that it's just a matter of time before Texas gets caught up with the rest of the nation concerning gay marriage. These are spiritual attacks. But if we think erroneously, oh, no, 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 these are civil matters. They don't matter to us spiritually. You bet they do. And we will be held accountable. Our civil responsibility in America that we were given by God, by the way, is one of the talents that God's going to ask us about when we get to heaven. Well, what did you do with your wife? Oh, I honored my wife. I love my wife. What did you do with your children? I love my children. I love my children. What did you do with the money I gave you? Oh, I prospered it and I invested it. What did you do with the gifts I gave you? Oh, I grew the body. Amen. What did you do with the country I gave you? Oh, I didn't think that was important. Amen. We're going to be held accountable for that. Amen. You know, the Bible says, this, this is just off the beaten path, but I got to share this with you now that we're so close to election time. The Bible says in Timothy, you know, there's an order to your prayers that God wants you to pray. If you want to pray Bible, the way the Bible, the way God tells us to pray in the Bible, there's an order. And you're supposed to start off each day by praying for something first before you pray for anything else. Do you know what it is? First of all, prayers, supplications, intercessions be made for all men and all leaders, especially those in positions of authority. God wants us to make supplications, intercession, and prayers first for the leaders of our country, for the Amen. leaders in the body, for the leaders of our city. If you have a leader in your life, God expects you before you pray for your wife, your family, your ministry, your finances, you are to pray for your leaders. Amen. We're not doing that. That's spiritual warfare. Amen. Take it, Father God. I thank you. My mayor loves the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you that my mayor is a supporter of righteousness, Father God. I thank you that my president, Father God, the eyes of his understanding have been enlightened. He knows truth. He seeks truth. He has a heart, Father God. The Bible says great scripture in Psalm 94, 15. It talks about that in the last days, God is going to return unto his inheritance fair judges, and people that will judge fairly. In the King James, it reads that judgment uh, will meet up with righteousness. And the translations are, God's going to cause our judges to start making godly decisions again, to judge fairly. And we're, we're holding that in Jesus' name. That's what Amen. our nation needs. Stand Holy. for the truth. Just like John the Baptist told the king, you have your, the wife of your brother yeah, and can't you're do that. an adulteress and is he but he, he wasn't afraid to speak he was afraid to speak even Paul when they forbidden him to preach the name of Jesus it says he continue preaching the name of Jesus the laws that are coming that are being oh. changed and we need to preach the name of Jesus and the true the gospel, word, the gospel. Hallelujah. not a watered down gospel compromising gospel boneless teachers boneless preachers we need to go back to our core belief of the gospel of Christ Jesus and we're going to go through these battlefields and we're going through these trials because it's because of a fallen world, because of Adam. Well, we've given up a lot yeah, of that. Yeah. We had the high ground in America. Yeah. You know, the, the, up to 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, the voice of morality in America was the church. It was specifically the pastors in the church. Amen. But the Johnson Amendment, the 503C1, whatever it's called, that said, hey, man, you can keep your money, but hey, you can't say anything against us. If we say this is legal, you can't criticize it. Mm -hmm. And so we're going back there. We're taking back the ground. It's a process and it's a job, but we're going to do it. God sending revival to America in the name of Jesus. Amen, brother. I really enjoy. Can you share with the audience how can it get a hold of you? Yes. And, uh, and before I dismiss... Go ahead, uh, thank you them. very much. Uh, we're uh, Marriage Needs Maintenance Ministries, and you can email us. We have classes on Friday nights, and we have classes on Sunday night. Friday night's class is about marriage, all about marriage. It's over by Spring Branch. And Sunday night's class is by, uh, it's every other Sunday, and it's over by Willowbrook Mall. And we're teaching on spiritual warfare right now. Uh, you can email us if you need some directions or need some questions answered. Gospel Guy 
at Comcast.net, G-O-S-P-E-L-G-U-Y at Comcast.net, or visit us at our website at MarriageNeedsMaintenance.org. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see you at one of our classes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I appreciate that. We love and you, Brothers Michael. and sisters, let's pray once again you, for Jesus. the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. Father, we pray for the peace of Israel Hallelujah. and Jerusalem. Father, you know the needs. Thank you, Jesus. Father, that no weapon that forms against them shall prosper. We plead the blood of Jesus around Amen. them. Father, we pray for our leaders, Father, Hallelujah. in the name of Father, Jesus, that you them, save Father, them and the fill them with the Holy Amen. Ghost, Father, in the name <clears throat> of Jesus Christ. And right now, if you have not accepted Jesus, just say, Jesus, come in my heart. Forgive me of my sins, and I receive my forgiveness in Jesus' name. I believe that you're the Son of God, and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If you said that prayer, just raise your hands and say, Fill me with thy Holy Ghost. Baptize me with thy Holy Ghost and Amen. fire. Right now in the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Thank you, in Jesus. the name of Jesus and if you're sick right now lay hands on your own body Thank and you, command Jesus. that Hallelujah. sickness to be gone because Jesus already healed you at the cross <clears throat> right now we command the sickness to dissolve and to go in the name of Jesus and those who need jobs father I pray did you help them to get a job God in the name of Jesus bless them father in the name of Jesus I decree blessings, prosperity, salvation for your home in the name of Jesus and healing for your body in the name of the Lord Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. God's looking at you and he's proud of you and he knows that he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Don't forget to call us if you need any prayer. Tell others about the services every Every, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Praise be to God. Thank you, brother, for coming. Thank you. We <laughs> love you. We appreciate you. the opportunity. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Where are the services? Praise God. Glory a Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website. And háblalos en el nombre de Jesucristo, Dios le bendiga.